Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with Movement System. In this video, we're going to talk about lactate. We're going to talk about some myths about lactic acid, and then we're going to clear up the science of what the difference is between lactate and lactic acid, and how this physiological process works in the body. And we're also going to talk about, at the end of this video, the lactate threshold and how all this science actually applies to your athletes and your training decisions. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so let's start with some basic metabolic physiology here. So if we eat a bagel or a donut and we break that down through our stomach and then digest it into our bloodstream, that's gonna be a glucose molecule. So that's what we're talking about here. It's a six carbon molecule of glucose. Now that glucose molecule can break down into two pyruvate molecules. Those would both be three carbon pyruvate molecules. And that process going from glucose to pyruvate is glycolysis. So now once we have that pyruvate molecule, depending on if there's oxygen available to metabolize that pyruvate, it's gonna go down one of two different pathways. So if there's enough room in the mitochondria and oxygen, then that pyruvate is gonna be broken down into acetyl-CoA and then enter the Krebs cycle and we're gonna get a lot of ATP here through aerobic processing. So this is the aerobic pathway that's always going on, but in a case of working out really hard, we're gonna be basically maxing out this aerobic pathway, and we're gonna to have to rely more on this anaerobic pathway. Okay, so the anaerobic pathway, if we have that pyruvate molecule and we don't have enough oxygen to metabolize it, it will then actually turn into lactate. So that three carbon pyruvate molecule here will basically accept a hydrogen ion and become lactate. All right, so now here's the fun part where we can start breaking down some of the myths about lactic acid. So why are hydrogen ions present? Is lactate actually putting hydrogen ions in the bloodstream and making the blood acidic? And the answer to that is no. Those hydrogen ions actually come from ATP hydrolysis. So ATP is a molecule, adenosine with three phosphates, and that is the energy currency in the body. So ATP can actually break down to ADP, and that would basically be just taking off one of those phosphates. And in that process, it's actually gonna use an H2O and we would call this ATP hydrolysis. So that ATP going down to ADP plus a phosphate would actually release a hydrogen ion. And that hydrogen ion is gonna go into the bloodstream. So that would cause the pH to actually drop in the bloodstream. And now we're in muscle acidosis. And again, when would this actually occur? This would occur if we're doing anaerobic exercise, so something that's gonna be fairly taxing on the body, like intervals or high intensity training, that's gonna be difficult enough that we're not gonna be able to supply adequate oxygen for the amount of work that we're doing. So in that anaerobic state, we're gonna be doing enough ATP hydrolysis that that hydrogen ion is gonna start building up, the pH in the bloodstream is gonna go down, and the bloodstream is gonna become an acidic environment. Now, at the same time as that's occurring, we're actually going to be taking those pyruvates like we talked about and turning them into lactate. Now here's what lactate is actually doing. Lactate is actually buffering the hydrogen ions out of the bloodstream, meaning that those hydrogen ions were put in the bloodstream through ATP hydrolysis and then the pyruvate turning into lactate is actually taking hydrogen ions out of the bloodstream. So this is really important. Lactate is being produced at the same time as the hydrogen ions, but lactate is not producing hydrogen ions and lactate is not making the blood acidic. It's just occurring at the same time. So now you might be thinking, well, once it has that hydrogen ion, is it lactic acid because it's now acidic? And the answer to that is no. Lactate is actually a base, so it's missing a proton and it's accepting a hydrogen ion. So it would actually be incorrect to refer to lactate as lactic acid. That lactate is actually buffering hydrogen ions out of the bloodstream and making the bloodstream less acidic or bringing the pH back up to neutral. So we know this is occurring at high intensity exercise, but it's actually important to know this always occurs to some extent even at low intensity. So even at rest or making this video, I'm producing some amount of lactate and I'm doing some amount of aerobic metabolism. It's just that when we're doing high intensity exercise, the percentage of the pyruvate that goes to the anaerobic pathway increases. And that's when we see our lactate concentration increase. Okay, so you may have seen a lactate threshold test, which has a graph like this. 
And this lactate threshold test is basically done either on a treadmill or a cycling ergometer or something like that. And it involves taking basically a prick of the finger and a lactate measurement. And that's just done with a blood lactate measurement device, prick of the finger, as an athlete is either running or cycling with increasing intensity over time. So as you can see on the x-axis is heart rate. As this athlete is running harder and harder, the heart rate is going to go up. Now at very low heart rates, 100, 120, 130 even, the lactate level is relatively steady around one to two millimolar. So that's about a resting concentration of lactate. And then as the intensity of the exercise increases, that lactate's gonna start to build up. And again, going back to the metabolic process, what's going on here? We're gonna be shifting more of that pyruvate into lactate, that lactate's accepting hydrogen ions, and that anaerobic metabolism is gonna become more of a primary energy system at those higher heart rates. And what that looks like on the graph is that we're actually jumping from one millimolar to two millimolar to three millimolar, and that's just the level of lactate in the bloodstream. So as you can see here, it's slowly gonna start increasing until we hit a certain point, and then that graph's gonna spike up. So for this athlete, that's right around 155 beats per minute that we see that spike in that lactate concentration and that change in slope from a relatively low slope to a steep slope, that change in slope, that point there is the lactate threshold. Now you may have heard of anaerobic threshold or a ventilatory threshold, and technically these can be slightly different and defined different ways, but for the most part, they're within a few beats per minute of each other and can pretty much be used interchangeably practically speaking. An athlete knowing where this point is can actually be fairly important for training because it represents a shift from primarily aerobic metabolism to anaerobic metabolism, meaning that a, an athlete working above the lactate threshold can't quite sustain those workloads as long as below the lactate threshold. So for example, if we're talking about a Tour de France cyclist or even a recreational cyclist in a group ride, if they can draft to stay just below that lactate threshold, they're gonna be able to cycle for significantly longer and have significantly less fatigue. Whereas if they go just above that threshold, which may only be a five or 10 beats per minute difference or a, a little bit of a drafting improvement for that cyclist, that could bring them above or below, but that can make a big difference in their perceived fatigue and their ability to maintain that workload throughout the race. And this could also be really helpful in determining heart rate zones and where you're gonna do your long runs versus where you're gonna do interval training. So one other question you might have is what happens when all that lactate builds up? So as you're seeing at the top of this graph, if this athlete really pushes it to a high heart rate, they're gonna get lactate concentrations up above 15 millimolars, which is really high, right? Compared to baseline of just one millimolar. So if we're having 15 times as much lactate in the blood, does it take hours or days to clear that lactate out? And the answer to that is actually no. That lactate will clear very quickly, within minutes after exercise. So once that lactate concentration builds up, we can actually clear it in a number of ways. Number one would be clearing it through oxidative muscle fibers, meaning type one muscle fibers in your bicep or your pec or your quads. If they're type one muscle fibers, they're very oxidative, they can actually use that lactate and they would actually take that hydrogen and basically cleave it off, add that to an oxygen molecule. And again, these are oxidative fibers, so that should make sense. We can combine that hydrogen with an oxygen that would make H2O. Uh, and that's basically the reverse of the hydrolysis of breaking it down. And that would basically bring us back to pyruvate, which we can actually use for energy. Another way that lactate could be used is by cardiac muscle. So the blood supply to your heart is not picky, it's very oxidative, it's right around the heart, and it could actually use lactate as an energy source. Additionally, that blood could actually move to the liver and go through the quarry cycle, which I actually have an entire video on how the quarry cycle works, turning lactate back into glucose. If you were interested in that, uh, you can learn all about gluconeogenesis in that video. And it could also be cleared out of the bloodstream by the brain. So all of those clearance methods work fairly quickly to clear lactate out of the bloodstream. So there is no amount of lactic acid buildup that you need to clear out after a workout or the next day. And lactic acid definitely doesn't make you sore either. That's actually most likely from micro trauma to the muscle fibers and not lactic acid buildup. All right guys, so to summarize, lactate is a base. It's not an acid. It actually helps to clear those hydrogen ions out of the bloodstream. And lactate is not the bad guy. So a quick round of applause for lactate.
Uh, it's doing good things for you. Smash the like button for lactate. Make sure you guys subscribe for more videos. And lastly, if you're studying for the CSCS exam, you can join the Strength Conditioning Study Group on Facebook and check out some of the study resources that I have in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.